today in Storrs, Connecticut. The last 19 meetings between these two programs, about as close as they could get a slight advantage for the Huskies. Starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. UConn, three seniors, two sophomores in the starting five. Paige Beckers, Kristen Williams, the leading scorers. Notre Dame led by a freshman point guard, Olivia Miles. Maddie Westfeld, a sophomore, is their leading scorer at 14 and a half points per game. But Sarah, they also have a lot of firepower off the bench. Well, Sonia Citron is coming off a tremendous game in the win over Michigan State. And she's someone that you've got to keep an eye out for because when you look at the second unit, what they're able to do and how she brings such a level of intensity and explosiveness, packs a lot of punch there as you're getting ready to go against this UConn team here at home. A freshman out of Eastchester, New York, about two hours south of here. UConn controls the opening tip. Fans on their feet until the first basket here inside Gamble Pavilion. First basket, of course, by the home team as Avina Westbrook has it knocked out of her hands momentarily. And it's deflected and stolen away by the Irish. Dara Mabry out to Miles on the wing. Mabry, a sharp shooter from outside. And here's Miles. A freshman, but her second season in the Notre Dame program. Backdoor cut for Westbelt and the Irish on the board first. And two things out of the gates, Irish, you see in that zone on the opening possession, able to cause disruption, generate some early activity, and great passing and cutting on the offensive side. Gotta wonder what's going through the mind of Paige Becker. She came to campus about a year and a half ago and has been waiting for this day, this atmosphere for a while. A very slow start, though, for the Huskies. Good ball movement here. Miles wide open for three. Becker's battling for the rebound with Westbelt, and it's UConn ball. Notre Dame led by Neil Ivey, her second season as their head coach. You see her record at Notre Dame 10 and 10 last year. In 2001, third team All-American, and the Irish won their first NCAA championship. Well, oh, she's got her team ready to go. We see this out of the gates from the Irish, how locked in they are on both ends. UConn coming off a win over Seton Hall on Friday night. Beckers pulls up and hits the first two of the game for the Huskies. Notre Dame was last on the floor Thursday. A tight win in East Lansing against Michigan State. Mabry quick catch and shoot and buries the three. Uh, that's where Mabry, uh, we've seen a long line of Mabry's here coming through Notre Dame, but the quickness of the catch, she does her footwork before it, how she turns and squares, and the release is so excellent. There's one on the bench as well. Older sister Michaela, an assistant on the Notre Dame staff as Aaliyah Edwards misfires. She had a big game on Thursday against Seton Hall. Here's Miles showing some patience, gets inside the paint. Mabry open for a moment. Has it taken away by Westbrook. UConn looking to run, but they give it right back. The steal is made by Anaya Peoples. Bounce pass inside the paint and a foul underneath against the Huskies. It's going to be a blocking foul against Avina Westbrook. Of course, UConn led by Gino Auriemma, the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer in his 36th season. Over 1,100 wins here at Connecticut. This team off to a 4-1 and one start. 1-0 one at home, but that was in Hartford at their home away from home at the XL Center. Westbelt has it poked away momentarily. Now puts it on the floor, drives the leg. Good job by Edwards with the help defense. It will stay with the Irish. Seven seconds to shoot. Excellent collapse there. And you see Nelson and Dota coming over Edwards. And that's something that's going to need to happen. Westbelt is so dominant on the offensive side. But Michigan State did a good job keeping her at bay the other game. And you see there just showing bodies and showing presence. Shot clock down to five. Mabry's got to pull up inside the arc. Good job by Williams to grab the rebound. 
And both these teams looking to push. They want to get out in the open court, look for early offense. Nice job transition defense, though, for the Irish getting back. UConn's third field goal attempt is a good one from the corner by Avina Westbrook. Vina Westbrook has been tremendous, and a big part of the accuracy and efficiency from the offensive side comes from her, and of course, Paige Beckers, as always. Vina Westbrook started her career at Tennessee, her second season with the Huskies. Looking to post up Dodson inside, but Nelson Adota doing a nice job on her. Shot clock is down to three, so Miles has to step back. Tough shot, doesn't draw anything. Huskies looking to push. Westbrook into the front court. Beckers pops open. Extra pass to the corner. Williams inside. Edwards off the glass and in. Quickness of getting it to the second side. And that's where the Huskies can be so good. The ball movement, the rotation of the defense not fast enough. And find those bigs inside. There's a turnover for Notre Dame. Beckers out in front of the pack. But a foul in the backcourt before they could get the fast break going. A foul taken by Olivia Miles. Just tremendous ball movement by UConn. It, this is an aspect of what makes them so good and so accurate, how they're able to make the extra pass to find their open teammates. And then, of course, we're looking on the inside. And Leah Edwards is a player, a slower start to the season, just in terms of how she's been scoring and rebounding. But she is someone that is going to be so integral for this group to really continue to get their offense clicking. She had season highs. Edwards did have 12 points and seven rebounds in 34 minutes. In Friday's win at Seton Hall, Beckers has it poked away by Westbell. Loose ball back to Beckers, loses the handle. A little hot potato here. Sonia Citron, who had a 29-point performance at Michigan State on Thursday, is into the game for the first time. Mabry doesn't need a lot of space. Dodson's follow is no good. Beckers open on the wing, fires. Hasn't been able to get that three-point shot to go so far this season. Yeah, and to think about the fact that she shot over 46% from three and this season just over 27%. What I like, though, is her aggressiveness to take the shot. Good little dribble handoff there coming from Westbrook to create that opening. But Gino RM has talked about this so much with Becker. She's such an unselfish player, of course. Top 10 in the country in assists. She's finding her teammates, but she too has to be really aggressive and looking for her own shot. Got a couple players on the court. Top 10 in the country in assists as Olivia Miles is second in that category. Kristen Williams can't save it inbound, so it will go to Notre Dame. Seven five, UConn's first lead of the game. Sam Brunel, nice pass inside for Citron, and the Irish pull even. Well, you see just how Citron ducks under. She does such a good job of just staying slippery, making those cuts. And again, it, it's the type of passing and ball movement by Notre Dame that's had them effective early. Nice look inside for Nelson Adota. You can say the same thing for both teams. And so much of this comes from a balance as well, because these teams can stretch you out knocking down a three-point shot. There's finding those cutting lanes on the inside. Sam Brunel, three-point specialist off the bench, right on cue. Sam Little back and forth action here in the first quarter. Williams puts it on the floor, drives against Brunel, wild shot. Citron has it knocked out of her hands by Nelson Adota. We'll stay with Notre Dame. We got a one-point game early. What a job here, Sam Brunel immediately comes in with a hot hand. Back here in Stores, Connecticut, some basketball rivalry right behind the UConn bench. One of the all-time greats here, Sue Bird. It's the Olympic tradition game. They're unveiling a monument to honor UConn's rich Olympic history, of which Sue Bird is a huge part with five gold medals. Uh, a huge part of it, and some others, Rebecca Lobo, uh, behind her as well. You also have Swin Cash here, and it's just, it's the legacy of this storied, storied, school and program and just how much the foundation has been laid by all of these individuals to bring them to the point where they're at here today. 
16 Olympians from this UConn women's basketball program, including 11 gold medalists out of the timeout. Notre Dame nearly turns it over, and then they do turn the ball over. And I think the amazing thing about having those individuals in the building and in here watching these players, Gino has talked about this a lot. This group in itself has yet to accomplish that. They're still trying to win a national title. And so it's a big part of the motivation, I imagine, as players when you have these legends in the building. 11 national championships, five years since their last one. That does come with a caveat because included in that five-year number is the 2020 season when the tournament was canceled. It was Juhas misfires on her first three-point attempt, and Nelson Adota gets to the free throw line. And that's an area Notre Dame has been showing a lot of this zone look for um, the duration of the start of this game, and it can leave you susceptible to some offensive rebounding, and Olivia Nelson Adota is someone who can take advantage with her size. Of course, she does such a nice job for this team in some of the dirty work and setting screens and helping this offense to function, but that's also an area that UConn can try to take advantage of this Notre Dame team. Career 55% free throw shooter. Preseason all Big East. Last year, the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Citron chases down the long rebound. Still a one-point Notre Dame lead. Latter stages of the first period. Mabry handling the ball with Miles on the bench. Dotson working out of the high post. Peoples puts it on the floor against Becker's tough shot. Good box out. Juhas shovels it inside to Nelson Adota. What a pass. And it started with Westbrook, though, because she's able to survey the floor, doesn't get sped up, gets it into the guts of the defense in the middle. It's a beautiful job with all individuals involved. Answer on the other end, off the mark by Dotson. Here comes Westbrook again. UConn trying to pay, play with pace whenever they can. Has some size out there. Nelson Adota pops out. Juhas posting. Westbrook firing. Long rebound. Saved by Nika Mule. Nice job in the corner. And there's just a great level of intensity by both of these teams out of the gates. Ball coming off. You see, we go with the hustle. Good heads up play. Players like Nika Mule becoming extra important these days. AZ Fudd, their talented freshman, is out for at least a couple of weeks with a foot injury as Mule has an open look. And Mule's still trying to get her shot going. And this is something that she struggled with at the start of last season. Hitting some of those looks and, and getting her accuracy to the point where I think we all can expect it to be as she did throughout the latter part of the year. Mule started 15 games last season for the Huskies, coming off the bench this year. Citron right down the lane, can't finish. Westbrook doing a terrific job on the boards in this first quarter. Some numbers for the Huskies. The Euro step for Westbrook. Becker, Citron crashing the boards. And Brunel comes up with it, taken away by Beckers, and pulls up. Oh, that was nasty. Beckers just snatched that. Pulled it, stopped, popped. The front end impressive enough, but then to nail the pull-up jumper seconds after. And here comes the pressure. Brunel for three. Cintron's all over the boards. The quick follow, no good. Another rebound for Westbrook. Seven straight points for the Huskies, but they turn this one over. Well, what you're seeing is just a lot of pressure in the backcourt. It's both on the ball, it's getting in passing lanes. You see Gino talking to his players, but so much of what they're able to do comes down to just taking care of the basketball and not allowing extra possessions for this Notre Dame team. Picking up their defensive pressure is UConn. The Irish have missed their last five shots. Three and a half minutes since they've scored. Good look for Dodson from the elbow. Ends the 7 0 run.
And a six second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Becker's four points in this first quarter. Looking to probe the defense. Juhas puts it on the floor, but traveled first with 11 seconds in the quarter. Once again, there is pressure by Notre Dame in trying to force quick decisions, force quick movement, hurry you up. Six turnover for UConn in the first quarter. Shot clock off. Mabry trying to create, loses the handle. Nelson Adota picks it up. Westbrook tries to get one off ahead of the buzzer. And the Huskies have a four-point lead after one. Good atmosphere in here for the first game in a while. Tremendous atmosphere and exciting to see as Gino and his UConn Huskies finally get a chance to play in front of this raucous crowd here at Gamble Pavilion. Getting set for the start of the second quarter, UConn a four-point lead over Notre Dame. Good finish to the first quarter for the Huskies. How about this, Sarah? I don't think anybody can lay claim to having UConn's number. If anybody can, though, it's Notre Dame. Over the last 10 years, they have beaten the Huskies nine times, while the rest of Division I has 11 wins against the UConn program. That's impressive. I think you look at those type of numbers, it's impressive. I also think, as Neil Ivey had talked with us about, just the confidence that has come, too, with how the Irish have played the Huskies in the NCAA tournament. And I think for those reasons, to think about the fact that they're 5-3 and three against UConn in the NCAA tournament, 5-1 and one in the semis. And, you know, this is a great test, I think, for the Fighting Irish to come in to Gamble Pavilion with this atmosphere, with what this team means, and to really put themselves up against some of the best here in the country. Citron open on the baseline to begin the first quarter with a bucket and a two-point deficit for Notre Dame. Man, Pat, she is just so smooth. The quickness in the release, how she moves so well without the basketball, but she has just got a confidence in how and where she finds her shots. She carries herself from what I've seen today like she's the best player on the floor. Coming off a 29-point game, you probably believe that. <laughs> Most points any player's ever scored off the bench in the history of the Notre Dame program. And it was the efficiency of it. I mean, 9 of 12 from the field, 3 of 4 from the three-point line. They've got a good foundation with Citron and Olivia Miles. They were the first two commits when Neil Ivey took over for her mentor, Muffet McGraw. A little less than two years ago as head coach as Dotson. Strong drive to the basket, and she'll shoot some free throws. And we talk a lot about Citron and, you know, the size that she brings to the table is also something that makes a difference here. She's left open because of that passing and, again, the balance that we talked about in the opening. But she can knock it from the outside. She can get on the inside and put it on the deck. She gets to the free throw line a good amount. And think about the fact that she's 6'1 with those type of handles and shooting ability. Very impressive just in her freshman campaign as she started things off. Nia Ivey also complimented her defense, saying she's getting there as a strong perimeter defender. And that's good. I, I think any player that has a good amount of length, a quickness, a lot of it is just engagement and understanding and getting used to the college game. Beckers and Mule in the backcourt for UConn, holding on to a one-point lead here in the second quarter. Kristen Williams back on the floor. Mule looking for her second from downtown, and she rattles it home. I mean, these are the first two three-point shots that she's made so far this season, but she's got a toughness in how she plays, and she's a confidence regardless. Citron misfires. Beckers grabs the rebound. On top of everything else, she's an excellent rebounding guard, nearly six per game. The pass inside is picked off. To the hands of Miles. One-handed shovel pass to her fellow freshman Citron. Dotson crashing the boards. Into the hands of Beckers. Williams pops open. That lefty stroke from the wing off the mark. Yuha's taken away by Miles. What an excellent job and gang rebounded there off the play, finding a body. Citron, another open look. No, she passes on it this time and draws the foul inside against Nika Mule. 
again, though, with Citron, the shot fake, the patience, she waited to draw out her defender before she put it on the deck. And you see it here, some good passing by Miles, but she waits. She gets Williams up in the air. <laughs> nice handles through traffic as well to get the shot off. First foul against Mule Citron with four points here in the second quarter. Gina Oriema after UConn's win over Seton Hall on Friday night, happy with the performance of his star Paige Beckers, but frankly after the game said we need to get her more help. Yeah, and you know she's been terrific, but need more help on the offensive side of things, also even on the defensive side, but Paige has been carrying a, a lot of the weight, and some of it too is just finding a consistency. It's so early in the season, but this group is used to one another, and they do have a semblance of continuity. Nelson Adota can't handle it. Already the eighth UConn turnover. And we started to mention this before. They're shorthanded. AZ Fudd, the number one recruit in the class of 2021, is out. Aubrey Griffin, their talented interior presence, hasn't played yet this season. So the Huskies were supposed to have a lot of depth, but the rotation is shortened to about seven or eight. Shortened because of that, and I think they've struggled shooting from the outside. And so when you have a lot of players that have an ability, whether it's the bigs on the inside or those that can put it on the deck and get to the outside, you're still not stretching out the defense and loosening them enough to give you room to operate and score at all three levels. West Belt off the inbound. No good with the left hand. It's been a quiet start to the game for Notre Dame's leading scorer. And turnover number nine for the Huskies. Citron coming off of a curl. Working against Kristen Williams, steps back into a three, and a tough one at that. I mean, tough to say the least. And what's impressive about that, working the pick and rolls, all of these players for Notre Dame are doing a really good job of just reading, reacting to the defense and forcing engagement. Citron, though, has so much gravity with the give and get back. Extra pass, Beckers from the corner. <laughs> Beckers has got such a smooth stroke, and I think for those reasons, we look at Notre Dame being in this zone, the pressure they're putting on, but the opportunity to knock down those open looks will help to continue to open things up for the Huskies. West Bell passes on the three, pulls up for the foul line. Contested shot, rebounded by Mule. Outside, Mule already has two three-pointers today. And a foul inside. It's going to go against Olivia Nelson Adota against Maya Dotson. Well, and Nelson Adota realized, and we've seen it both from her and from Edwards, they're demanding the basketball. They're looking for deep seals despite the fact that there's traffic, knowing that they'll either get it on the inside to collapse the defense and open up a kick out, but a little too aggressive there. Also, the wraparound. No one home off Mabry's pass, looking for Dotson into the UConn bench. Seventh giveaway for the Fighting Irish. Avina Westbrook back on the floor. Starting five out there right now for Gina Warrior and this team. up from Westbrook comes up short see if Notre Dame tries to push the tempo here Citron wide open from the corner Citron's had a couple of good looks from that spot there's Beckers pulling up and using the glass comes up short good battle by Nelson Adota and she draws the foul against Sonia Citron so we got a game here. A couple of talented perimeter scorers going at each other. Citron from the corner. 
Beckers, you know she has an answer. UConn by three. Top 25 matchup in stores. A three-point lead for UConn midway through the second quarter. The freshman Sonia Citron impressing so far with eight points. Neil Ivy in her second year as head coach. This is a pretty good way to lay the foundation for a program. Yeah, I, I would say so. And when you look at both of these individuals, there are so many aspects that they bring to the table that go beyond just what you're seeing at these numbers. And when it comes to Olivia Miles, the type of poise that she has as a freshman to run the show, how she organizes things, Citron being able to score from anywhere. They just really come in and do a good job of showing a level of maturity already here in their first years. Miles with the basketball and sets up Brunel on the baseline for the open jumper in a one-point game. But Miles is an interesting story because she wasn't going to have a high school basketball season last year. So she actually graduated early and came to Notre Dame in the middle of last season and was able to play six games and get that experience for the Irish in what should have been her senior year of high school. Well, and you can see it how she plays and to think about the fact that as you have mentioned number two in the country in assists per game foul on the rebound against Brunel nice job by Juhas and the battle on the boards is going to be really interesting to watch throughout the course of this year throughout the course of this game because both these teams have size they have players that are aggressive attacking the glass but they've done a nice job so far in just their attention to detail and finding bodies. Nelson Adota one-on-one -on -one with Dotson backing her way in. Good battle there, plus the foul. <laughs> that is a strong move, and that's exactly what you want to see out of Nelson Adota. And watch her footwork off of this play. She feels the body, and Dotson doing everything she can to try and make sure that she doesn't allow such a low seal and inside position for Nelson Adota. But those are the types of things for Gino Oriema as he's talking about this offense trying to come around you're going to need and you look at the numbers there high level of efficiency for Nelson Adota and where she's getting her shots from and she's a player too that just does so much in terms of the little things for this group but you're going to need the point protection for her to get this offense where you want it to be that was also UConn's first made free throw of the game. As the crowd here not agreeing with the foul call on the other end against Davina Westbrook, neither is Gina Oriema. Both these teams have been very physical. They make you feel them in bodies on the perimeter, but also around the basket. Citron matched up with Westbrook here. Dotson rolling to the basket out of her reach, and they turn it over. A right idea there off of the play, Citron trying to lead Dotson to the basket, but that's been a lot of what UConn is doing, whether it's on the hedge, the blitz, they're showing two bodies at the ball handler. And Notre Dame has found some cuts on that early on, but also some miscues just given the fact that UConn brings so much size and length when they're covering you on the ball. Caroline Ducharme, a freshman from Milton, Massachusetts, has checked in for UConn. Travels, her first touch here at McDonald's All-American last season, who's still trying to work her way into the rotation. Again, another one of those players that could get an opportunity here with the AZ foot injury, the Aubrey Griffin injury. We thought we'd see Aubrey Griffin this weekend. She had a little bit of a setback with a back injury. So she continues to wait to make her season debut. Miles down the lane, switches to the right hand and a tough finish. It's so smooth. And for Miles, who's someone who can set up and facilitate so well for her teammates, she also takes advantage here of just getting a step on Williams. And because of that, Nelson Adota can't necessarily come over to help. And she does a good job with just her body control off of that. First foul on Kristen Williams. Miles can't complete the three-point play. Good ball game. First women's basketball game at Gamble Pavilion this season. And that's an illegal screen against Dorka Juhas. Once again, Miles. And now we talked about her on the offensive end defensively there. Working over screens, even as a zone. Trying to move and beat to the spot and understanding you need to go over when it comes to Paige Beckers. They're just... Ooh. Nice shot. You has the transfer from Ohio State, two-time Big Ten 
all Big Ten performer. Citron nearly came up with the steal and would have been off to the races, but it's knocked out of bounds. You know, it's funny, there's a lot of conversation about Sonia Citron. Should she be in the starting lineup producing the way she does? She came into the game about three minutes to four minutes into the game. She hasn't left the court since. I think that uh, statement is true. It's not about who starts and who finishes it, but who's been on the floor and doing so much in all areas. And we're seeing her importance today. Knocked out of bounds off of Westfield. It's been a tough start for Notre Dame's leading scorer. She has two points. the defense and pulls up. Nelson Adota on the boards again. There's Juhas with the follow. Nelson Adota's turn. Plus the foul. Authoritative play by Nelson Adota. And you love to see it. And this is another situation with the Notre Dame zone. Shot goes up and no one's able to keep a body on her. Miles was in front of her, but it's just continued pursuit here of the basketball to finish off the play. Second foul against Maddie Westbell, the fourth against the Fighting Irish here in the second quarter. Olivia Nelson Adota, one of two Huskies that played all 30 games last season. UConn's leading rebounder this season finishes the three-point play. She's done a nice job on the boards so far this afternoon. And a miscommunication between the two freshmen. Citron was going inside and Miles threw it outside. And some of that too is just the type of denial. One pass away we see from Paige Beckers, but from all of these Husky players, and you really see the same on both sides. This has been an impressive start just in terms of how both of these defenses have done a really good job of not only identifying the ball and putting pressure on that, but off-ball actions. Turnovers mounting for both teams. It's also an intimidating place, intimidating place to play for an opponent. We asked Neil Ivey about that. She said she wasn't necessarily intimidated when she was here as a player, but when you walk into the gym, you're aware of the program and the history and the atmosphere. Charm, nice pass into the corner for Williams along the baseline. Outside gets Becker's an open look for three. One game. Excellent play, which all started with Kristen Williams. The recognition to work the inside out, and that's what it's all about for this UConn Huskies team early on and trying to bust up the zone. Six straight points for UConn. Closing the second quarter with a flourish, and Beckers is going to be called for a foul against Citron. Again, we talk about Williams and what she's able to do. The ball movement, the penetration, the kick. You work one inside out this time. Get into the teeth of the defense again and find your sharpshooter and Paige Beckers who's come out and she just is a player who I think we've all been so impressed with but as she comes into the sophomore year the continued improvements in her strength and we know about her vision but the decision making and the quickness in her decision making and I think too just taking on the responsibility of looking to be even more aggressive at finding her own shot. She's such a unique player because she's such a dynamic and talented scorer yet so unselfish at the same time. Seven points in this first half for Paige Becker. She'll put this play in motion. 
They're looking for Nelson Adota down low once again. Off the mark, follows it up. Back to the free throw line. I think they're going to get Maya Dotson. No, that foul's going to be against Natalia Marshall. And coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we'll feature UConn's Paige Beckers. We'll also have first half highlights and analysis from stores. Nelson Adota, we keep talking about what she's doing on the inside. Her ability to get so deep around the basket is what's allowed her, even if she doesn't get that first look to go in, to be in position for these offensive rebounding. Second chance points is going to be very key for the Huskies and something that Notre Dame will have to take care of as they look towards the second half. Starting to get into a nice rhythm from the free throw line. UConn's lead is eight. Citron trying to make it five. One last chance here for the Huskies. Beckers ahead for Williams. The catch and count it. A little hometown roll for Kristen Williams. You know the crowd loves it. It's there on their feet. A get ahead. And UConn, yeah, you know they want to run some early offense in the late part of this halftime. And look at Beckers get up. The reaction from her teammates. Oh, what a play to close things out as you kind of try to take over the momentum here going into the half. Leading scorers from the first half. Sonia Citron with 10 points off the bench. Beckers with 10. Olivia Nelson Adota with 12. And she was really a force inside, especially in that second quarter. And I think it wasn't just for as much as we're talking about the offensive rebounding, but demanding the basketball, being a presence. And Paige Beckers, too, she was someone who early on, she's going to balance in her read and react and looking for her own shot. She facilitated well. I think you got to did a much nicer nicer job here against the zone and really working the inside out game to shift and force tough rotations. UConn hit 40% of its shots from the field in the first half. March 2nd, 2020, that was the last game inside Gamble Pavilion with fans before today as Beckers gives the Huskies their largest lead of the afternoon. She's got such a pure shot. What UConn is utilizing as well as still setting screens to allow those openings. Miles can't answer on the other end. Peoples can't either. Olivia Miles played 15 minutes in the first half. Aaliyah Edwards steps around the defense and is blocked by Dotson and then a foul against UConn. Looks like it's against Nelson Adota. Second for her second. Dara Mabry, the third Mabry sister, to suit up for the Fighting Irish. Started her career at Virginia Tech, but had to keep it in the family somehow. Dodson inside against Nelson Adota. Play continues after the block. And a good box out by Westbrook. Great verticality by Nelson Adota. She's already had five blocks in a game this year against number one South Carolina. Notre Dame getting out and running. It's Miles. And that's against UConn just finding ways to get easy baskets. I think Notre Dame has really had to work offensively as of late. But if you can continue to put that pressure on in the backcourt and force an extension of this UConn offense. It'll certainly help them like they did in that quick start out of this game. Edwards has it taken away by Peoples. Notre Dame looking for back-to-back -back conversions, but Beckers, good hustle to get back into the play. Beckers and Nelson Adota running the screen and roll. Down the lane, off the glass, pretty. Beckers makes every shot look so easy. That is such a high degree of difficulty look to bank off the glass. Good answer by Mabry on the other end. Beckers has 14 points now. Williams beats everyone down court. <laughs> Kristen Williams with four points. Dotson pulls up from the foul line. No one near Nelson Adota. 
Williams reverses it this time, comes up short. Good battle, Westfeld and Edwards. It's a jump ball to be Notre Dame basketball. Well, and Edwards starting to get on the action as well in terms of rebounding and offensive rebounding, an area that she's not been quite as dominant in the early part of the season as we saw last year. But overall, you just see the push, and Kristen Williams always does such a nice job of leaking out quickly. Huskies recognize that, the quickness of the get-ahead. But for Notre Dame, we've some inconsistency in their transition defense, but overall a good job, especially in that position, identifying the ball. Irish, an arm's length away from UConn right now. The shooting just not there so far today. They're 30% from the field. Miles goes around the defender, able to keep possession. Citron, pump fake into a jumper. Line drive, no good. Citron's missed some that Miles has done an excellent job with the setup and just some looks that I think she regularly is accustomed to knocking down. You can see some of the frustration on her face. She did such a nice job with that pump fake. It looked like she was too wide open that time. UConn's largest lead has been 12. They turn the ball over again. That is their 16th giveaway. And we're not even to the midway point of the third quarter. Nice slip pass inside for Brunel. Can't hit. West belts follow, no good, but she's fouled inside against and, Kristen Williams. And West Belt, she's been quiet. One of six from the field, and she still has some trouble getting going. We talked about coming off that game against Michigan State where she was four of eight from the field, but below her average, which is eight points, she did have eight rebounds. But for her to get herself to the free throw line, see some go through, try and have just a level of continuity here in getting her looks because... UConn has done a really nice job just eliminating a lot of her touches and it making it really challenging for her to find the basket. She scored a double figures her first seven games of the season. That streak came to an end Thursday night at Michigan State, a game that Notre Dame did win. Chris Becker's off the curl, stops on a dime. Nelson Adota battling for the offensive rebound with Citron, and it's off of Notre Dame. Beckers cuts the lane. Looked like it was kicked inside by Brunel. Nika Mule came on in the first half. Hit a couple of big threes for the Huskies. Backdoor feed Edwards is blocked, but fouled inside by Westfield. Once again, though, a nice cut, and that's a beautiful pass. That goes back to the vision we talk about of Paige Beckers. It is elite, and she can see over the defense. Does such a nice job of hitting Edwards in stride. And the cut is deep, and that's where Notre Dame, whether they're in the zone or how they're going to attack and cover UConn on the offensive end, the bigs are just getting too deep of position, allowing them some easy looks around the basket. And again, even off of misses, some of those second chance opportunities, which has been a big reason for the discrepancy in the score. Aliyah Edwards, a 63% career free throw shooter. Niel Ivey looking to lead her team to a signature win this afternoon. Edwards, last year's Big East sixth woman of the year, goes two for two. Maddie Westfeld, meanwhile, as Mabry rattles home a three. Westfeld has gone to the bench with her third personal foul. Tough sledding inside for the Notre Dame interior players. Today. And that's been a big part of it, but to think about this being an eight point game with this much time left. Well, Mabry sold it, drew it. I don't know how you would.
describe that, but it's an offensive foul. Well, nonetheless, Notre Dame maintains possession. And for an Irish team that has been struggling in their accuracy from the field and giving up a lot of points on the inside, the Ivy has still got to feel good about where her team is at. Paige Becker is one of the great debut seasons of last year. 20 points per game, 168 assists, setting freshman school records. Big East Player of the Year, her first year on campus. And of course, the Wooden Award, one of the first freshmen to ever take home that award. Third freshman to be first team All-American, Sarah, this year and this afternoon. She's picked up where she left off last year. Well, she's just got such a high level of skill in what she does in her craft. And it's not just on the offensive end. You see it defensively, too. But she's been knocking down some open shots. She's creating for her teammates. And when it comes to Paige Becker, she's got a moxie about her. And she wants those big moments. But gives such a level of confidence for her teammates. And you see how hyped she gets for her teammates. She swings the momentum of a game. And as the Huskies finished off in such a strong way at the end of the first half, Paige being such an integral part of that, you continue to see just how she is the leader of this group in both areas of the floor. Mabry starting to feel it. Miss fires that time, and it's knocked out of bounds off of Notre Dame. And we will step away from stores with UConn holding an eight-point second-half lead. Well, much still to be decided in stores Connecticut this afternoon. First meeting in two years between Notre Dame and UConn, both in the top 25 right now. The Huskies hanging on to a 43-35 to lead. The feeling I get, Sarah, neither team has really seized control of this game right now. No, and I think for Notre Dame, we talked about their inefficiency from the field, and you got to feel good about the fact that you're still within eight. UConn, though, with 17 turnovers already. They're still looking for a sharpness and just a connectivity here on this end of the floor. And I think in some ways they've had some nice big plays and stretches, flashes where you see it. But still the Irish in some ways giving them a little bit of trouble with this zone. In the first half, they made a conscious effort to get the ball to Nelson and Dota inside. That's when they ended the first half on a 10-2 run. Nice pass inside. Williams finding Edwards ahead of the shot clock. No worries. UConn has been dominant, is on the inside. And whether that's through the interior passing, putting the ball on the deck, or just the offensive rebounding, so much of what they've been able to do damage on has been around the inside. That's a nifty move by the freshman point guard, Olivia Miles. Well, Miles just has such a, an ability with her handles and the quickness of her first step to create space for herself. And the finishes, keeping it on the right side. She's smote, showing such a smoothness in how she's able to get the ball in the bucket. Defense converging on Pace Beckers. Open momentarily. Nika Mule looking for her third three of the afternoon. Well off the mark. And a foul on the rebound attempt against Sonia Citron. And that's an area that Notre Dame has got to find a way to take care of if they want to get themselves a win here today because UConn has had so many extra opportunities right around the basket because of it. Well, Notre Dame fell asleep there. Edwards pops open for the easy layup. Citron, by the way, just picked up her second foul. Miles trying to answer with a very similar shot off the mark. Bodies fall. Edwards hits the deck. It's out of bounds off of Notre Dame and Maya Dotson. So you see Neil Ivey setting her leading scorer, Maddie Westbelt, back onto the floor with three fouls, but it's getting late. Notre Dame's down by 10. Eighteen to eight advantage points in the paint for UConn. Beckers in traffic, Tom. That's where Paige Beckers is a class above all others. To be able to get off that shot. Citron takes a hard fall, gets up quickly. Well, we've Good seen to it see. From Citron, we've seen it from Miles, and them with their ability to get to the cup, and they haven't been able to finish at this point. You just see Citron just coming in hard. 
as she hits the ground, Edwards stepping over and picking up the foul. But for Notre Dame, just the idea of attacking, because even if you're not necessarily getting a layup to go in, they're getting themselves to the free throw line. That was an aspect of their game against Michigan State. They're able to take advantage of and throughout the course of the year, but just opportunities to get to the line. And it breaks up the game a little bit. We talk about the lead that UConn has, but UConn has done a nice job in thriving of getting out in transition in the open court, trying to play at a tempo and a pace. And for Notre Dame, their ability to be able to get stops, slow them down, have the ball go through and force the Huskies to play in the half court against the zone. Citron's got 12 now. Notre Dame back within 10, and there's a foul inside against Edwards. So that's back-to-back -back fouls against Aaliyah Edwards. This one on the offensive end. So Gina Oriema will take Edwards out of the game. Olivia Nelson and Dota back in. Going a little smaller now with Nelson and Dota and four guards out there. Miles, nice pass inside. Dotson can't finish. Offensive rebound. She'll try it again. That one, she gets the roll. Great job by Miles. And that's like that's where Miles is so smart and savvy in, in really showing that type of experience because she could have quickly went up with the shot, but again, she creates space, pulls it back enough to force that angle for Dotson to be able to make the play. On a day in which Notre Dame hasn't played its best, hasn't shot its best in the third quarter, less than two minutes to go, they're down by eight. Tough environment on the road. Mule has to fire away from the corner. Good box out by Westbelt. It's surprising for Mule. You thought that maybe she was getting going there, hitting her first couple threes to start off this game, but back to shooting more of what, what she had been doing the early part of the year. Beckers capitalizing on the turnover. Do you know Oriama has talked before about Paige Beckers? <laughs> what she could do defensively. Another turnover on the inbounds pass, so UConn will get the ball right back with a 10-point lead. But what he has pointed to is that she's so smart and savvy offensively that she's always a step ahead defensively and shows it here. Nice job by Nelson and Dota and Beckers. Keeping the Huskies up 10. Neil Ivy and Notre Dame now trailing by 10 late in the third quarter. We talked about how they're not playing their best today. Look at their numbers today, Sarah, compared to what they've done so far this season. Well, rebounding is the huge factor and also go along with that with the assists. And not going to get a lot of assists if you're not making shots for Neil Ivory. The thing is, her team has always been so good defensively rebounding 11th in the country. And that has just not been the case today as UConn has been able to really exploit the Irish on the glass. And Part of that, too, is, is tricky with a zone. Because zone, when shots go up, it forces you out of position. But UConn has been able to do an excellent job of really finding those openings. Out of the timeout, Mule turns the ball over. So Notre Dame gets the ball right back after the unforced error on the inbound. And the turnovers have to be frustrating that man. Whistle underneath against UConn and Avina Westbrook. Well, it, and here's the thing, a, a lot of these have been dead ball turnovers, so Notre Dame hasn't necessarily been able to get out and generate a lot of quickness off of them, but it's still just giving up extra possessions. And for UConn, they're still trying to find their footing, their chemistry, their identity, in particular on the offensive end. Limiting your miscues is one of the first things that you want to be able to do and that's something that UConn has just not been able to do here today but give credit to this Irish defense because they've done a really excellent job in maintaining an aggressiveness. Westbrook's foul, her third, puts Dotson on the free throw line where she's just one out of three today. Shooting right into the student section of UConn. <laughs> Dorka Juhasz checks back in. A little more size on the floor as Mule goes to the bench. UConn finished the second quarter strong. 
Help them build that 10-point halftime lead. Williams out to Beckers. Nelson Adota inside and an offensive foul against the Huskies. Man. Nelson Adota and Dodson have been battling. And you see it with both of them, whether it's on the offensive end or defensive end, working for position. And Nelson Adota just reaching over Dodson, who does a nice job at coming over the top there in her denial. There are two high-level interior players. Dodson averages three blocks a game as Citron hits the deck. And the fans here, well, they haven't seen this team play here in nearly two years, and they're getting a little restless, and they're getting their money's worth this how, afternoon. How much fun is this crowd having? I mean, it is live here, such an incredible atmosphere, so much engagement. You see the foul is... Westbrook, just a little bit of that right arm shove and discarding Citron. Now Westbrook goes to the bench with her fourth foul. Nelson Adota has three fouls, so that's starting to become an issue in a tight ball game here for the Huskies. Citron hits them both. It's a seven-point game. Nelson Adota remains out there with three fouls. So does Maddie Westbelt for Notre Dame. Shot clock off here, end of the third. Williams from the corner. Irish will have a chance here. Miles quickly with her head up. On the baseline, open look for Abby Prohaska. Offensive rebound, that's going to be too late. And no good anyway. And we've got a seven-point game entering the fourth. So UConn, Gino Ariema back inside Gamble Pavilion looking for their second home win of the season. A seven-point lead, fourth quarter coming up. And Notre Dame has done a nice job of still maintaining a shorter distance and smaller deficit against UConn, who, you know, overall, they've turned the ball over. They've given up a lot of possessions, but they're playing very hard. They're moving the basketball. They've been working to figure out the zone, and they've been really efficient at getting the ball inside. And per the usual, Pace Becker says, has been spectacular in her accuracy from the field and her decision-making. And this is going to be an important start to the quarter for Notre Dame, especially given the fact that the Huskies are here at home. Again, keep an eye on the foul situation. Olivia Nelson Adota, who has the ball in her hand right now, has three personal fouls and a good start to the fourth for UConn. She's got 14 points. All that damage coming inside. Dotson and Nelson Adota has been a matchup to watch this afternoon. Citron trying to spin away from Beckers. Here's Dotson and Nelson Adota going to the hook shot off the mark. And Dotson's very aware, you could tell, of the physical play of Nelson Adota and how she's trying to body him. But in some regards, with that being said, you got to focus less about the contact you may receive and more just about finishing the shot. Nelson Adota also with 12 rebounds in this game. Beckers for three. Yay. Gamer. She is an absolute gamer. And if you were to nitpick her season so far coming into today, just 27% from downtown. But the numbers, there they are, 21 points, above 50% from the field. Westbelt can't answer. And Beckers corrals the rebound. Kristen Williams. Five straight for UConn to begin the fourth. Mabry wanted that earlier, and Miles barrels into Paige Beckers. And there we see it at both ends of the floor and the smartness and savviness. So we talked about this at the end of the third quarter about Beckers being one step ahead because she has such a good read and smartness on how she plays. Stops, gets set, embraces the contact. And the reaction. And, you know, for teammates of Paige Beckers, that's a part of why she shows such great leadership because of the emotion. And, of course, because of the playmaking, the shot making, and doing so much for how this team finds success. No hesitation there off the mark. Miles taps the rebound to herself. Miles is a terrific rebounder for a guard. Uh, absolutely. 
Brunel trying to answer. She's off the mark. Miles has six rebounds. Beckers. She's got three. Mule. So after making their first two shots of the quarter, the Huskies have pulled off. Notre Dame, however, looking to get on the board here in the fourth. And, and you mentioned the rebounding aspect, though, of Olivia Miles. Her and Caitlin Clark of Iowa are the only players in the country averaging at least 10 points, seven assists, six rebounds. And you see it just in Miles' organization, the size, but also she has such great pursuit and tenacity regardless of what aspect of the game that she's playing. Directing traffic now, step back 17 feet away. And a foul inside called against Maya Dotson. Her second. So not the start to the fourth quarter that Notre Dame was looking for. They had themselves an opportunity down by seven, but two and a half minutes at no points. Interior pass, bounces out to Juha's tough feed for Williams, and she's fouled by Mabry. First foul against Dara Mabry. Mabry will take a seat for Sonia Citron. Second leading scorer this season for the Irish. Neil Ivey needs a bucket or two. Ducharme, the freshman, nice move through the lane. That's a quick first step. She's explosive. Nice shot by Beckers, getting it across to that second side. And for Ducharme, she's someone to keep an eye on because you see the length, the high release point, and the moves that she makes. Beckers comes up with the steal, looking to push, poked away from behind, and fouled by Citron. Beckers once again getting it done on the defensive end. Quick steal. I mean, the fact she keeps herself in bounds, Citron trying to poke it from behind, picks up the foul. But Beckers is continuing to be so aware of what's happening. And this is the breakout that they've been looking for for Caroline Ducharme. Back-to-back -back buckets, the number five recruit in the 2021 class. And UConn has extended to its largest lead of 17 points. Oh, Paige Beckers is loving being here at home in front of this crowd. Telling the student section, get off your feet. It's been quite a run here for the UConn Huskies. Six minutes and change to go in the fourth quarter. UConn a 17-point lead over Notre Dame. Sarah, it's a 10-0 run to start this fourth quarter for the Huskies, and it's a run led by Paige Beckers. Yeah, and she's doing a little bit of everything, but it's generating from the defensive end, her activity, activity getting in the passing lanes, and being able to really get this tempo clicking for UConn and their offense. And for the Huskies, that's been an area of concern starting the season of how they gain and get more chemistry offensively but a big reason why they were so successful last year was what they did defensively creating points off turnovers a big part of that Beckers has started also some big time shot making to go along with it three and a half minutes into this fourth quarter Notre Dame still looking for its first points still looking dots it off the mark collides with Beckers underneath and Beckers is down on the ground in the paint with her four teammates standing around her. She's on her back now and is helped up. And Beckers going hard for this loose ball, and oh, you see, just gets crushed in the neck there by Dodson and goes down hard off that play. And both players just trying to do what they can to pick up the loose ball, but you see Beckers catching the brunt of it both along her neck and takes the fall, gets herself to the free throw line. Maya Dotson, a solid six foot three. That's already the 15 foul against Notre Dame. So UConn on top of everything else in the bonus the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
22 now for Beckers. And draws another foul against Dara Mabry. You see the fist pump by Beckers, and she is trying to get this crowd going. You see it right out of the gates here. Her hustle back off this play, and watch Mayberry. Mabry just a little bit, the shove off with the left arm. We talked about the rivalry between this Notre Dame team and the UConn Huskies, and you are feeling it right here between all of these players. Little word from Nia Livey to Dara Mabry after she takes her out. And how about Ducharme here in the fourth quarter? I think Gino Ariema has, I'm not going to say stumbled upon something, but uncovered something. Absolutely. And, you know, that's part of it for the Huskies as they continue to work and learn and acclimate themselves to one another. In doing so, you mentioned the fact that uh, AZ Fudd is out, that Aubrey Griffin is out, two parts that they felt would be integral to the rotation. Hopefully they will be back soon. But with that being said, some opportunity for some other players, and Ducharme being one of those. West Bell draws the foul inside. Notre Dame will finally have the chance to get off the schneid here in the fourth quarter. It's the fourth foul against Olivia nelson Adota. So it took more than four minutes for the Irish to get on the board here in the fourth. One for two, another rebound for Nelson Adota. That's her 13th. And the UConn Huskies, they, they they had a lead and they were maintaining control. They're here at home. But for Notre Dame, that's still a part of what they're looking for with this team. How do you close out games? How do you finish off fourth quarters? And the Huskies are the ones that really took control and were able to open up and give themselves a good amount of breathing room. To Charm, and she stepped on the sideline before making a move. a 13 to 1 advantage this quarter scoring wise for UConn it was a seven point difference at the start a lot of Paige Beckers and a lot of Caroline Ducharme Citron was very active, especially in the first half. Tough shot off the glass. Well, say this much, too, and there's still five minutes left here in this quarter, so this game is still very much in play and not over. But just the opportunity experience for so many of these young Notre Dame players, whether you're looking at Miles, whether you're looking at Citron, and just how they've come out and performed really impressively. Beckers pulls up just inside the foul line, and Miles couldn't corral it. You know, you think of not only Paige Beckers playing in this atmosphere for the first time, again, after basically becoming a household name as Miles comes over to make the block, but the student body here at UConn. Imagine you're a freshman, now a sophomore at UConn. This is a big reason why you come to school here to experience this, and a lot of them are doing so for the first time today. It's really been such a special environment, and I think, you know, so much of what we look at is just women's college basketball and how many teams and players who have done such a tremendous job of creating this level of excitement and enthusiasm and we feel it here from the student body and this is something that the Huskies have always experienced here at Gamble Pavilion just it goes back to us being able to see Sue Bird and Rebecca Lobo and Swin Cash and those as they're getting honored here today. The foundation that they laid for just the amount of loyalty and passion for UConn Huskies basketball. But it spreads as well to Notre Dame, to so many different programs and just what is continuing to be built. And there is still something about Notre Dame-UConn. Yes, Notre Dame had a down year last year. It was Ivy's first year. It was kind of a transition year, but they're back in the top 25. And you see these two programs on the court together, and it brings back so many memories. Yeah, and 
for Coach Ivy, I mean, I know she's on her second year as a head coach, but to think about the challenge, her first year as a head coach and what the pandemic and the challenges, uniqueness of that experience, finally getting the group together here for the first time this fall. That's going to be number five on Olivia Nelson Adota. So her afternoon is finished with 14 points and 13 rebounds. The last time these two teams played, Nelson Adota also had a double double of 16 points and 10 boards. So a nice hand from the appreciative crowd for Olivia Nelson Adota. Her work this afternoon, the senior out of Winder, Georgia. West belt off the inbounds. Nice use of her body. Already the ninth game of the season for Notre Dame. Just game number six for UConn. They went to the battle for Atlantis in the Bahamas Thanksgiving week as Ducharme's big fourth quarter continues with 11 points now in the fourth. And you guys just started to pile it on on both ends, and you see it just the locked-in nature on the defensive end, how much that has allowed them to have more fluidity offensively. And they're a team that they're... they're got some swagger in each of their individual players but collectively the enthusiasm they have for one another I think has always been just so much fun to watch Edwards nice spin move inside Ducharme on the offensive boards is blocked and taken away by Dotson Ducharme with 11 points today she had four the entire season coming into this one and 11 in the fourth quarter Westbrook's seventh rebound. Historically, Notre Dame plays UConn as well as anyone. This is their 52nd all-time meeting. UConn a 38 to 13 advantage coming into today. But compared to what they've done with every, against every other program in the country, that's a pretty good job by Notre Dame. And, and you know what? Notre Dame really came out and they did a good job with their attention to detail. They haven't been able to hit shots at a high rate, but I think the pressure that they put on with the zone against UConn early on, the Huskies started to figure out, and so much of what opened things up for UConn was their ability to tack the offensive glass, show a sense of force on the inside, find some easy buckets, and then also make those skillful ones. March 2nd, 2020. 21 months and three days ago. That was the last time before today that UConn played here at Gamble Pavilion in front of fans. A nice welcome back for the fans this afternoon. Nineteen to five, the score of the fourth quarter until that shot by Citron. You can see in the looks of some of the faces of these Notre Dame Irish players some disappointment and frustration. We'll circle back to oh. That did not look good as Paige Becker's knee buckled. And now all of a sudden there's concern for the best player on UConn who's lying in front of the Huskies bench in pain. And let's take a look at Beckers as she's bringing the ball up the floor. Watch just the ankle as she comes down. As she continues to try and go up, but she's still on the ground right now as her team surrounds her.
This was the scene a moment ago here in stores. Paige Beckers was helped up, unable to put any weight on her left foot and had to be carried to the UConn bench by two of her teammates, where right now she's being looked at by the athletic trainer, Gina Oriema, standing nearby. We're in the final minute of a UConn win here, up by 18 over Notre Dame, and just a terrible development in this last minute for the reigning national player of the year. And while that shot goes through, I think all the focus, attention, concern is for Paige Beckers. seconds here in stores. Miles will try to get up one final shot for Notre Dame, and that's the final 73 to 54. Can't think of a more anticlimactic ending for what was a well-played game for UConn. Paige Beckers in tears being helped off the floor. Gina Oriem and Neil Ivey. Neil Ivey faced him many times as a player. UConn improves to five and one on the season. Back with more from stores after UConn's first win here in more than a year.